Welcome to Lesson 2b, Miscellaneous Stuff About Tensor Notation. In this lesson, we'll discuss a few miscellaneous things about tensor notation, such as the comma convention, and what to do when you don't want to sum over repeated indices, the contraction of a tensor, the trace of a tensor, how to split a tensor into symmetric and antisymmetric tensors, and then we'll do an example problem. First, consider the shorthand comma convention. Tensor notation is already a shorthand convention. Do ui do xj is a second order tensor, for example. But we can make it even more shorthand by using the comma convention ui comma j. The comma signifies a derivative with respect to the index after the comma. Here, for example, ui comma j implies del ui del xj. Another example, del squared ui del xj del xj can be written as ui comma jj. The two j's after the comma means we're taking the derivative twice with respect to xj. This, by the way, is the Laplacian of ui, or del squared u in vector notation. As our third example, del squared q del xi del xj, where q is a scalar, in our shorthand comma notation, we would write q comma ij. Now let's consider this example. Since the j's are repeated, we know that we're summing over the j's. What if we don't want to sum over the j's? The convention is to write it this way, and in parentheses simply say j not summed, or in common notation we write ui comma jj j not summed. This is the way you would indicate to the reader that you're not summing these j's, but if you see it expressed like this, you assume that you do sum the j's, since they're repeated indices. Now let's consider the contraction of a tensor and the trace of a tensor. Contraction on i and j means change i and j to the same index. Consider, for example, a second order tensor T, where in tensor notation we write it as Tij, or keep in mind that Tij is simply a component of the tensor, where there are nine components here as written out in matrix form. So if we say contraction of Tij on I and J, that means we change I and J to the same index. We can use I and get Tii, or we can use J and write Tjj, or we can pick some other index like k and sum over k instead. These are all equivalent since these indices are dummy indices or repeated indices. Regardless of the repeated index we choose, we're simply then summing the diagonal components t11 plus t22 plus t33. Therefore tii represents the trace of t where you hopefully remember that the trace of a tensor like this is simply the sum of all the diagonal components, which is exactly what we're doing here. As another example, suppose we're contracting A, J, K, a third order tensor on J and K. This means, according to our definition, we set J and K to the same index. So we can write A, I, J, J, or A, I, K, K, etc. We cannot write A, I, 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 though, as this would violate our tensor notation rules. You can't have more than two repeated indices in the same term. In other words, you're free to choose any repeated index you want when you contract. Typically, you pick one of these, but I can also write AILL if I wanted, as long as you don't violate any tensor notation rules. Now consider symmetric and antisymmetric tensors, and we'll limit our discussion to second order tensors. It turns out that any second order tensor can be split into a symmetric and an antisymmetric tensor. For example, take some general tensor BIJ. I split it into one half bij plus one half bij. Now let's add and subtract one half bji, where I've switched the indices. So this term is here, but I've added one half bji. And the second term is one half bij minus bji. So this term is this term, but this term and this term add up to zero. So I haven't changed anything. Let capital Sij be the symmetric part of bij which is one-half bij plus bji, in other words, this grouping of terms. Similarly, let aij be the antisymmetric part of bij. aij is thus one-half bij minus bji, which is the second grouping of terms. So bij can be expressed as sij plus aij. Note that symmetric means that sij equal sji, and antisymmetric means that aij is negative aji. This property of splitting the second order tensor into symmetric and antisymmetric parts is useful, for example, with something called the doubly contracted product of a symmetric tensor and a general tensor. First, I'll state a rule, namely a symmetric tensor times an antisymmetric tensor 
is identically zero. You can prove this to yourself by doing some examples. Now let's consider the doubly contracted product of a symmetric tensor and any tensor, not necessarily symmetric or anti-symmetric. In vector notation, some authors write this as tau colon b transpose. But in tensor notation, we simply write tij bij, where the symmetric tensor is tij, and our other tensor is bij. And we're simply multiplying them together. Well, we can split up bij into symmetric and anti-symmetric parts. But this is a symmetric tensor times an anti-symmetric tensor. And from our rule above, this term goes to 0. So tij bij is equal to tij sij, where sij is the symmetric component of second order tensor bij. In words, the doubly contracted product of a symmetric tensor and a general tensor is equal to the product of the symmetric tensor and the symmetric part of the general tensor. This will come in handy later on. Anytime we have a symmetric tensor times a general tensor, we can simplify it this way, as stated here. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.